My mom is turning 81 years old and still loves her Medicare supplement Medigap plan and would never change to a Medicare Advantage plan. Why? Well, keep watching. Wait, even after the fact that she can save two to three thousand dollars per year, and with all these other free perks that you see on TV and the internet, yeah, she's aware of all hmm. of that, and there are no regrets. How about your mom? Well, my mom is turning eighty-three years old and still loves her Medicare Advantage plan, even though she's had some health issues since we made the last video. She still will never consider a Medicare supplement plan like your mom. But what about the fact that she might be unable to switch back to a Medicare supplement, Medigap plan, or the co-pays that she has to deal with while she's dealing with health issues? She's okay with that? Absolutely. And she's aware with all of that. And she's used her plan quite a bit and with no regrets. She knows the risks, but she's sticking with her decision. So why? Stay tuned. Whether you are new to Medicare, turning 65, or watching this during the annual open enrollment, we know Medicare can be a frustrating process. Absolutely. Even worse, you might even choose a plan that you'll regret later and you discover that you can't switch to the ones that you actually want. So what plan should you choose? If you already have a plan, should you stick with it or make a change? What updates are coming this year? We hope you enjoy this special video, which addresses 90% of the questions we've received from our clients going on 20 years in this business. Hi, I'm Kai. And I'm Anne. And our goal is to help you retire healthy and wealthy. And happy too. Yes, because there are people who are not happy and regret their Medicare decision. And many are shocked to find out they can't change plans or that all their research was done for nothing. Mm -hmm. Even with the annual open enrollment, there are some plans that you will not be able to switch to. So rather than watching the YouTubers and the other salesperson tell you which plan that you should buy, we will discuss real examples of the top three reasons why people like our parents will avoid either a Medicare supplement Medigap plan or a Medicare Advantage plan. Choosing the right plan is simpler than you think. It's all about the process of elimination, knowing what you don't want first and why. By eliminating what you don't want, we'll give you the confidence to decide which plan is best for you. We're here to cut through the noise of all the commercials and the gimmicky sales tactics and help you avoid the dreaded FOMO, the fear of missing out. How can we do that? Well, we represent over 50 plans and can assist in all 50 states and have been specializing in retirement and Medicare for going on 20 years now. Every one of our agents is personally trained and vetted by us, so you'll never experience the pushy sales tactics you want to avoid. Or the clueless rookie who doesn't know what they're talking about exactly. type of atmosphere. <laughs> yes. And here's the best part. Whether you go directly through Medicare, the insurance company, or through us, the price is exactly the same. We get paid by the insurance companies and not by you. All right, let's dive in. Now, before we forget, our retirement puppy, Gracie, will be our Medicare judge. Each time there's a key point, you will see a picture of Gracie on the screen. <laughs> and let's do a quick recap on Medigap versus Medicare Advantage plans. We'll review the concept in detail, the cost differences, and the rules for changing between the two plans. So even if you know the basics, pay close attention to the comparison and see what you already don't know. Also remember, if you are already on one of these plans and are happy with it after watching this video, then there's no need to change your plan. Unless you received a letter that your plan is ending this year, you will automatically be enrolled into the same plan the next year. Yes, no sales pitch, no bias, no softening the blow, just straight talk to our viewers as if we are friends and not salespeople. Let's start with my mom's Medicare Advantage plan. These plans are not supplement plans. Not even like a supplement plan. Thank you, Anne. That's right. Don't let salespeople trick you into thinking that Medicare Advantage plans are like supplement plans because Advantage plans technically replace your original Medicare plan. Medicare refers to these as all-in-one plans, which you can think of like a buffet compared to an a la carte menu. They often bundle in your Part D drug coverage and sometimes include extras like dental, vision, gym memberships, and more. My mom chose the Medicare Advantage plans for the costs and the perks, but she's very aware that she forfeited her rights with Medicare while under the Medicare Advantage plans. So what do we mean by that? Well, remember, the government actually funds the Medicare Advantage plans, so the insurance company takes all responsibility for your care. Therefore, Medicare will not pay a dime if you get sick. Since the government funds Medicare Advantage plans, everyone is still required to pay for Part A and Part B. Part A is free for most people, but while CMS, the Medicare agency, oversees these plans, 
Insurance companies control key aspects. They can approve or deny your care, determine which network, such as HMO or PPO, you must use, and have the authority to adjust your plan's benefits and network each year. That's why it's crucial to read your annual notice of changes or ANOC letter each year to understand any updates for the upcoming year. The goal of these plans is to save billions in Medicare costs by outsourcing administration and payment for the senior health care. While they are more restrictive than original Medicare, the monthly premiums for these plans are typically from $0 to $100 a month. Since these plans are funded by the government, you typically won't face yearly premium increases like with a Medigap plan. When you add up the cost of original Medicare, Parts A and B, Part D, and extras like dental and vision, your total monthly cost usually falls around $200 to $250 or $2,400 or more per year. And age isn't a factor, but your zip code will determine what's available in your area. You can either give us a call or check Medicare.gov to see all the plans in your region. Remember, whether you go through Medicare, the insurance company, or us, your premium stays the same. We're paid by the insurance companies and not by you. That's right. And just to be clear, the cost that she mentioned included the Medicare A and B premiums. Okay, so why not consult with someone who is licensed and certified by each insurance company to guide you rather than trying to navigate the information on your own, especially with what Ann said when there's no extra cost? So with all the restrictions and the insurance company being controlled, why would your mom decide to stick with a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, stay tuned. I'll get into that in a bit. And if you're enjoying our videos, don't forget to hit the like button. It may seem like a small gesture, but it helps YouTube see the value in our content and allows us to reach more people who could really benefit from it. So let's review what my mom has and how it works. Medigap plans are also called Medicare supplement plans. And these are the only plans that actually supplement Medicare. And just to be clear, you're talking about Medicare is the primary on, on these plans, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Therefore, all authorizations would go through Medicare and not the insurance company. The insurance company cannot deny what Medicare already approved. Medicare generally pays 80%, and the Medigap plan will generally pay the 20% remaining amount. Medigap plans are guaranteed renewable, and in most states, Medigap plans are standardized, so they cannot change their benefits. That's why you won't get that annual notice of change or that ANOC letter. And you can also think of these plans like an a la carte menu rather than the all bundled plans like the Advantage plans. The Part D drug plan is separate. That's why they call it a standalone drug plan. Your dental, vision, and gym memberships are generally separate as well. Now, some plans might bundle in a gym membership or vision, but that's usually about it. Mm -hmm. And Medigap plans typically cost between $100 to $200 per month. While the benefits for standardized Medigap plans never change, you can expect annual rate increases of 5% to 20%, depending on whether the plan is community rated, issue age rated, or attained age rated. We'll dive deeper into this at the end of the video, or you can find a link in the description below. When you add up the costs of original Medicare Parts A and B, Part D, and extras like dental and vision, your total monthly cost usually falls around $300 to $400 or more, depending on your age and zip code. Keep in mind that Medicare.gov may not list all plans, and the premiums by age may not always be accurate, as Medigap plans aren't sponsored by Medicare. For precise rates, be sure to contact the plan directly or give us a call. Now, when we talk about all these costs, I just want to make something else clear. You may not notice the extra cost that we're talking about because the Part B premium for some of you is taken out of your Social Security check. Mm -hmm. So you might be wondering why our price is a little bit higher, but this is factoring in the Medicare Part B, whether you're paying it out of your Social Security or you're sending in these payments. Okay, now with the total yearly cost that Anne was talking about, it's going to average around $3,600 to $4,800. Now, why would your mom choose to stay on a Medicare supplement, Medigap plan, when she could save over $2,000 to $3,000 per year like my mom? Well, I will answer that in a bit. Okay. Not, at, not right now. <laughs> All right. Now, and every year, though, we get people asking us to switch their plan. But unfortunately, we had to be the bearer of bad news, letting them know that they cannot switch their plan. Mm -hmm. So before we dive into why our moms chose their plan, let's clarify the rules of switching plans, something that still confuses 99% of people out there. 
Yes, not knowing these rules first can really waste all your time researching which plan is better for you. So to clarify this, we made a chart that clarifies the open enrollment differences between a Medigap, Original Medicare, and Medicare Advantage. Now you can download this chart in the description below, but in this video, we're just not going to go all into it, but I want you to watch the other video before making any decisions. Right. So let's now discuss three reasons why my mom will still keep her Medigap plan and won't even consider an Advantage plan. And why my mom prefers to stay with her Medicare Advantage plan and won't even think about a Medigap plan. But first, did these rules for changing help you figure out which plan is right for you? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, ladies first. Well, thank you. The reason my mom will keep her Medigap plan, even though she's missing out on all those advertised free perks and could save around two to 3,000 a year. The main three reasons for her decision fall under the what if mindset. If you think like my mom and prefer the least hassle, then a Medigap plan w might be the right choice for you. For her, cost isn't the main concern. First, she doesn't want to risk being unable to switch back to a Medigap plan. To return to that coverage, she needs a special event known as a guaranteed issue, or she'd have to pass health questions on the application. She understands that Medicare supplement Medigap plans have a one-time only open enrollment period, unlike the yearly open enrollment period for Advantage plans. True. My mom doesn't care about that bundled perks offered by Advantage plans. Instead, she prefers to choose a dental or vision plan that provides her with a broader network rather than the limited network associated with Medicare Advantage. The second reason would be the freedom to choose Medicare's network versus the insurance company's network. When it comes to the freedom to choose, Original Medicare has a much larger network than Medicare Advantage plans. It's accepted in all 50 states and doesn't require a referral to see a specialist. She never worries about whether a specialist will accept her Medigap plan, unlike with a Medicare Advantage plan. Well, one quick interruption. Of course, there are some networks out there like Sutter that may only accept existing Medicare patients right now, and they no longer accept new Medicare patients. Now, some of these networks only take Medicare Advantage plans and not original Medicare. That's not everywhere, but there are, that is in some areas. Mm -hmm. And while some HMOs and PPOs do not require a referral to see a specialist, Original Medicare still has a larger network of specialists. Yeah, so to Kai's point, she is a what if person. What if she gets sick and wants to choose any specialist? What if she wants to go to Stanford, UCSF, or the Mayo Clinic? Now, the third reason is no co-pays. Another factor is that she doesn't want to deal with co-pays. If she were to get seriously ill or need surgery, she wants the peace of mind knowing she only has her Part B deductible under Plan G with no co-pays after that, no annual maximum out of pocket. She prefers to avoid the hassle of managing various co-pays. She also doesn't want to deal with annual notice of changes other than her standalone Part D plan. And while there are no co-pays under her plan, she does get annual increases with her Medigap plan, anywhere from 5% to 20%, but she doesn't care about that or the overall costs. Having more control in the what if situations and having the least hassle is most important to her. So we know some of you might comment and say that the co-pays under your Advantage plan is very small, or maybe you have no co-pays. But the first two reasons, the rules of changing and the freedom to choose Original Medicare's network are more important than the savings of $2,000 to $3,000 a year or so in costs. So what you're saying is that if your mom could go back to a Medigap in the future, she might actually start with a Medicare Advantage plan. Oh, yes, most likely. Who doesn't like to save money up front, right? And that's why Medigap plans often check your health history so people don't only return to them when they encounter health issues. Well, let's now discuss the three reasons why my mom would not even consider a Medicare supplement Medigap plan like your mom and why she will continue on her Medicare Advantage plan. If the costs now and the most upfront savings are most important to you, then a Medicare Advantage plan is most likely best for you. My mom's main concern is her monthly cost and yearly costs now, not what it might be. The cost outweighs the rules for changing, and she knows that she may not be able to go back to a Medigap. She's also aware that her cost might be higher in the future if she gets really sick. But you know my mom, she's the 
what is the premium now and what are the copays now type of person. You know, she's really that bottom line now cost. She feels like she can pocket that extra two to three thousand dollars per year that she would be spending on the Medigap side. There's more upfront savings with the Medicare Advantage plan because of the bundle perks like dental, vision, gym membership, and so forth. Well, caution though, not all Advantage plans have dental and don't get fooled by these perks because the network for the dentist and vision plans are very limited. That's very true. But my mom also doesn't mind the limited networks. Now, regarding the network of doctors and hospitals under the plan, she feels that they're good enough. Uh, that She's not the what if person like your mom. She never worries about the what if, whether she can't go to the doctor or any doctor or any specialist in the United States. She only cares about the local doctors near her. And as long as they're on the list, she's okay with that. She also doesn't mind referrals under the requirements under her current HMO plan. She also knows that she can choose an HMO POS, that means point of service, that doesn't require a referral to see a specialist. Or she knows in the future she can switch to a PPO plan where she can choose any specialist that's outside the network without a referral. But the specialist must accept the plan's terms and conditions, right? Yes, that's true. But again, she doesn't mind that. Now let's talk about the copays and deductibles. Most of the time, there are no deductibles for HMOs. Now with PPOs, there might be a deductible. But she's always had advantage plans that have very little to no deductible and low copays. She's not scared of the copays or the maximum out of pocket or MOOP that some salespeople will try to use. Her MOOP has been as low as $1,000 and really around $3,000 is the average MOOP that she has to pay. She knows that there are changes each year, but she reads her annual notice of changes or ANOC letter, and she doesn't mind that. She doesn't mind if she has to change her plan here and there. There have been times when her plan was no longer available in her area, and she had no choice but to change her plan. Mm -hmm. Again, that didn't bother her like it would bother your mom. She doesn't mind the co-pays or the fact that the insurance company is in control since she wants to know. The overall cost now and the upfront savings is what's most important to her. Now, we know that some of you will comment on some plans with moves up to $6,000 or $10,000. But again, those plans are very rare. And also remember, the MOOP is not your deductible. The MOOP is only after the deductible and the co-pays of $5, $10, $100. And they all add up to the maximum out-of-pocket or MOOP. A MOOP isn't really that scary as some salespeople or some of the comments you might hear. And my mom figured that if she can save an average of $2,000 to $3,000 a year, she already saved around $40,000 for the 17 years that she's been on Medicare. Now, Kai, wouldn't you say that the main reason people hesitate to buy a Medicare supplement Medigap plan is because of this cost savings? Yes and no. I mean, for those with a pension or a hybrid pension, and if you don't know what a hybrid pension is, check out our other videos on the link below. The cost really isn't that much of a concern. And they typically opt for a Medigap plan Mm -hmm. because they have that guaranteed income every year. However, most do not have a pension or a hyperpension or know about a hyperpension today. So this is the number one reason why millions are choosing Medicare Advantage plans now, even if they prefer a Medigap plan. True. Even our clients with a million dollars in their 401k often consider Medicare Advantage or seriously evaluate it due to the lack of pensions. And that's why we created a video and playlist discussing how hybrid pensions, pensions, and your Social Security impact your Medicare choices. And if you'd like to learn more about how the decline in pensions has led many to choose Medicare Advantage plans, even if they prefer Medigap, well then click in the description below for our hybrid pension playlist. So here are the three reasons side by side, and let's take another poll this year. Do you agree with my mom? Are you the what if and want the least hassle type of person where the cost is the least concern? Or do you agree with my mom where the cost per month now and the upfront savings are the most important? Where the rules of changing back to Medigap and the fact that the insurance company is in control, not Medicare, that doesn't really bother you. Let us know in the comments below. Either way, if you're already on one of those plans and are happy with it after watching this video, then there's no need to change your plan or renew your plan. Unless you received a letter that your plan is ending this year, you will be automatically enrolled into the next year. Also, remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you'll be the first to be informed of any Medicare changes in the future. Now, what if you're leaning towards a Medicare Advantage plan, 
or already have one, but you're still unsure due to the rules for changing and if you really have the best plan or not. Well, then click on the playlist here to learn more. Click here if you're leaning towards a Medigap or already enrolled in one to learn the three ways Medigap carriers can raise their rates and which Medigap plan is the best for you.